You know, to tap into the presence of God concerning provision, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of knowledge and composure as well. Composure is when truth becomes sacred to you and you protect it, you keep it. And that's when you step into composure. Every month, the Father has a new set of provision for everybody. Every day, there's new benefits. So, it's not something that you have to harass God about. It's just simply, simply something that you discover constantly. There is something that we see in the word with the life of uh, Lazarus. When Lazarus died, we saw the reaction of his sister. His sister was concerned. And the concern that the sister had was that she felt that she knew how the problem should be solved and when it should be solved. But yet Jesus had another initiative, another plan. If you're going to be successful in your walk with the Lord, recognize that God already knows what you have need of. And you, it's okay. You should voice what you have need of. But also recognize that his timing is in his jurisdiction. He doesn't move just because you feel the urgency to move. So when you go through an emergency, this is what happen, often happens with people. Like say an iron hit your child in the head and your child is bleeding and the doctors tell you your child may not make it. Then you go to God and say, Lord, you better do something right now. Or, 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 you got to do something right now. You see? The situation is deciding how you talk with God, not your wisdom, not your composure, not your submission, not your trust. What's deciding how you talk to God is a doctor telling you that your child is bleeding and might not make it. This is what's deciding your, your anxiety is talking to God. The Bible says, be not anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for nothing. Have you mastered freedom from anxiety? And if you haven't, you're going to have the mindset of a fool. And you're going to be unhappy. And you're going to live tormented. Because God will break that in you before he officially brings the solution into manifestation. What you have to know that the Holy Spirit has tailor made a walk for everybody to kill every evil way in you, to kill every evil thought in you, to kill every evil urgency in you, when Hannah had a child, the motherly nature of every mother is to raise up your child. But God gives her the child and then doesn't let her have a say-so in the child's life. The will of God is perfecting her will. Her will is not perfected because she's doing what she wills to do. Her will is perfected because his will is overriding her will. This is why we don't have a lot of powerful people because most people lean to their will. They lean to their stress. They, they lean to what's bothering them. So there is a place in the glory that's beyond where you are today. You can't get there until your will is subdued and God's will can override yours. You imagine Elkanah, this was his son. 
And God didn't even let him speak to his son. God said, Eli is going to be the father of your son. Eli. Eli is going to father your son. He's going to teach him how to be a man. Going to teach him how to be a male. Going to teach him what to do, what to say, how to live. Think about that. Saints all through the word of God. The Lord is breaking people's will. Abram, I'm going to give you a son. And then offer your son to me. Wait. If it was a lot of people of our day, those people will argue back and forth. I bind you, Satan. The blood is against you. No, and no, I'm not going to let the devil take what God promised me. And meanwhile, it's God. This is how God operates. He will target the things inside of you that is raw. It's uncooked. How many of you all would eat raw meat from the junk? I mean, somebody right now just give you raw meat. It's uncooked and they just give it to you. They just cut it off and just give it to you. You will want the meat to be cooked. You will want the meat to have a process of fire, a process of discomfort before it gets to you and you chew on it. And then you got those other people that 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 they don't eat meat because they think they're wiser than God. Stupid. God said to eat the meat. They they talking about no, I'm vegan. I don't eat meat. <laughs> You imagine, you, you, there's people like that. So you smart at God. Oh, I don't want to, I know the animal. The, okay. 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 You think you're so smart. And then when they get older, this is how they walk. This is how they walk like this. Their shoulders sticked up like shoulder pads. Look like they're about, huh, two, three, four, huh, hi. That's how they walk. Look like they are part of Michael Jackson choreography team. And that's what they think. They lean to their own unrighteousness. Even in life, God breaks your will. Have you go against your natural mindedness? Just think about if God sees you saying, I don't eat something because I know how it should be done. And that's not how it's supposed to be done. You think you can be a friend of God? No, you can't be God's friend. What is it about being God's friend is that you're able to adapt to his way of seeing something in all matters. Can you adapt to how God sees it? And that's what makes you a friend of God. So saints, if you take a note, write this down. Every time I am denied, divine friendship is created. Every time I am denied, divine friendship is created. Saints, the Bible says, make your petitions known unto God. Make your petition known. Let it be known. Talk about it. You want healing? Talk about it. You want to get out where you live? Talk about it. You want a new car? Talk about it. You want a new body? Talk about it. The Bible says, do it with thanksgiving. You give your petition and you give God thanks over it. And let him do what he wants to do. Because he knows how to treat you better than you know how to treat you. And saints, how many times in life you had an idea to do something for somebody and God held you back, he held you back, and then when time happened, you said, oh, that's why I couldn't do it. That's why I couldn't do it. And it was the Lord. If, if you was in control, you would have had regret. Man, I shouldn't have did that. But because God was in control, you ain't got to worry about nothing because you stuck to how God wanted you to do. We always have thoughts. 
We don't always have thoughts. You'll see somebody right now. They could be in your life. They go through a hard time. You want to fix the hard time for them. And then that's that's the same person that rise up to be your enemy. That's the same person that rise up to be your Judas, that rise up to be your issue. And you wanted to fix their situation for them. And when time happens, you're like, wow, I'm glad I was patient. I'm glad I didn't lean to my own understanding. Saints, your own understanding, if you're taking notes, write this down, your own understanding will create your future tears. If you're taking notes, write that down. Your own understanding will create your future tears. Your own understanding will create your future tears. Do you know that people cry because they heeded a lie in the past? Regret is when you let something that came from the mouth of a deceiver deceive you. That's what regret is all about. Regret is recognizing how blindsided you was to something that you handled in your own understanding instead of receiving God's. You have to receive God's understanding in all situations. A man that walks through rain has more authority than a man that commands the rain in some situation. Did you know that God could back a man while he commands the rain to stop and the rain stops? And another man walks through the rain, has an umbrella, and you look at both of them, and you'll say, that man that stopped the rain has more authority. That's not always the case. It is the case in, in various situations, but it's not always the case. Because the man that is in understanding of why the rain is coming. Is it satanic? Is it an attack of the prince of the power of the air? Is it evil? Or is it because God has a purpose? He wants to water the crops. It's harvest time. He wants watermelons to grow, grapes to grow. He wants people to have access to food. He wants the horses to drink. He wants the cow to have nourishment because they milk the cow. Have you ever thought the cow needs to be hydrated? Gives fresh water. And then you think about it, there's other scenarios where the birds get to drink. There's other scenarios where the land gets to be um, uh, blessed because of the water. And a lot of times, God does not want the rain to stop. So imagine if a man is just all about, you know, I'm going to stop this rain. I'm going to stop this rain. And that's not on God's mind. That man could be a man which God is friends with him. And he wants to ex And he commands the rain to stop. And God could back him. And it's still not God's will. Are you shocked? When you are a friend of God, you could do something that he doesn't want done and he could back you because that's the gift of authority he has given to you. The gift, the gift. It was a gift given to you. Saints, I, I'm gonna shock you. I'm gonna shock you. I want you to see this, my goodness. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. My goodness. I want you to see this. Ma grande kendon seniga. Donen angelis ana azia. Aleno gilia jazono vilishiana. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. And also remember this. When Elijah when he was calling down fire upon the captain in his 50, he called down fire again. He called down fire. The fire keeps on coming. And then God, he's about to call down fire again. God sends the angel to talk to him. The angel said, don't call it down this time. But he was about to call it down again and it was going to come. But God had switched his will. So the authority 
that Elijah was now moving in was not the authority to change something. But it was the authority to agree with the timing of God. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is so mighty. Go to Numbers chapter 20. Oh, this is shocking. Look what it says in verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod. Gather the assembly together. You and Aaron, your brother, speak unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So shall you give to the congregation and their beasts to drink. So as you can see, animals need water. So that just going to alignment with what I was just telling you. A man that walks through the rain, has an umbrella, may have more authority in some situation than the man that speaks to the rain and the rain may stop. The man that is in alignment with God's agreement, he knows the beasts need to eat. You know what beasts are, right? Beasts are cows, buffaloes, all that different type of stuff. All those different type of beasts. You know, it's what God says, give the water to the congregation and to the beasts for them to drink. The horses, all them, they need it. The cows, they need it. The sheep, all of them, the goats, they need it. Now, that's verse 8. Look at verse 9. Numbers chapter 20, verse 9. Look what it says. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Now, look at this. In verse 10, Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, this is Moses talking. Hear now, you rebels. Hear now, you rebels. This him talking now. Now, this is not what the Lord told him to do. This is what happened when you lean to your own understanding. Look what it says. He says, hear ye now, you rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Look at what verse 11 said. And Moses lifted up his hand. Look. Look, now his body is doing exactly what God told him not to do. Saints, you can disobey God when you want. You know, if you ever hear somebody say, you know, I, 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 you know, I can't, I, I, I'm going to stay in the path of God because he won't let me go. Yeah, you, you, you be deceived. God ain't holding nobody captive to his will. That's why you, that's why when, when time comes and, and situations come, that's why you could talk out your head. I'm leaving or I'm doing this or I ain't, I ain't paying up with it. I'm not going to let this person talk to me like that. I'm not going to let them look at me like that. I'm not going to let them treat me like that at the workplace. I'm out of here. I ain't going to let this happen to me. That's why you could do all that because nobody is being held captive against their will to stay in God's will. Nobody is. You might think you are, but you're not. Because the day that you decide that you want to do Satan's will, you're going to be doing Satan's will. I was just talking to my son, Juan, and I was telling him that you have to always pray because we are surrounded by evil all the time. I just called him, was telling him, you always got to pray. Because evil is always around. And you can never say that evil not going to touch me because of who I am. Because despite who you are, evil will still touch you. Evil will touch you and you ain't kill five people. Why is the evil touching me? I haven't done nobody wrong. I haven't killed five people because evil knows who is exercising agreement with God continuously. And if you're not in agreement with God, evil takes root in you. 
I don't care who you is. Yesterday, you could be Michael. Tomorrow, you nigga L. If you're not intentional, intentional about leaning out to your own understanding, you will operate in evil. Let me ask you a question. Do you know when your soul is traveling down the evil path? Do you know? Do you know? No, the hell you don't. Because if you did know, a lot more things will materialize in your life. That's the honest to God truth. If man knew when evil was in them and it should be ejected by them, they will be further along in life. If evil is in you, you know what happens? It stops promotion. It stops provision. It stops peace. It stops protection. All right, let's go. I want to show you this. Saints, Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights and still had evil inside of him. Huh? That's what I'm telling you. You have to pin in your mind that you're going to keep on going. Not I arrive. Not that I made it this far. I'm good. Now, no. Keep on going. Have you ever gone on a 40-day, 40 40-night 40 fast? Have you ever not ate for 40 days? Have God ever gave you a commandment in your hand and, and had you write it down? And you got it right there in tablets? When we look at the life of Moses, Moses did all this and Moses still has evil inside of him. Why am I talking to you about this? I'm provoking you to tell you, you have to keep on repenting daily of things that enter in your mind that God don't give a truck about. He don't give two squats about it. Follow the mother trucking instruction daily. Don't get anxious for anything. Follow the instruction daily and don't be anxious for anything. Shut the hell up in your brain and finish assignments daily. Everything will be added unto you at the end of righteousness being fulfilled. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. You trying to get things to be added unto you and you not seeking ye first the kingdom. Since that's why even if you are a blessed person, you got to raise your children different. Because your children come into this world thinking that everything you got is theirs. When you are blessed, if you have children, your child would think, Whatever I dream about, whatever I want, it is acceptable to me. It's going to come to me right now. Not only that, also, if you bless as a man and you get a wife. Your woman will think that everything that is at her need, her beck and call, you must fix it because you, you got the power to. That's not how God works. And that's why things often become shady. Because people start to believe that everything that is an issue in their mind should be taken care of by God. And that's not how God works. 
God will let Apostle Paul experience issues. And Apostle Paul said, take this from me. And God said, no, 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 I'm not taking it from you. Because I, I have something I want to see in you. I have something that I want to produce in you. So I'm not going to let it. I'm not, I'm not taking it. I know it's painful for you, but that, that don't phase the fact that I'm still going to let it continue because it is a part of me getting what I want to see out of you. It's a part of my plan. Saints, do you know how many times I was homeless in life and it was God's will? You know how many times when I didn't have no food to eat and it was God's will? Yeah, I wasn't on schedule to eat. Why do you think that you're always on schedule to eat? Because you become self-entitled. Well, I'm supposed to eat because I got hunger pains. So your hunger pains have given you confirmation that you're supposed to eat. When, when really, the hunger pains has been dominating you since you was a baby. The baby cries because the baby wants milk. Everybody moves off of what their body tells them. And then you start confirming this is what I deserve. And, and then it, it becomes sexually too. Women start saying, because I feel horny. Matuntun start feeling tickly. The man, because I start getting uh, 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 strong. Now it's time for me. That's, that's, that's man. Man make their decisions off of what they understand from their body. And not what they understand from their spirit. This life in the glory, it causes you to receive a new literature from the spirit of you. You already know the literature of the flesh of you. You already know how to cuss out. You already know how to talk back. But in the spirit, you got to learn to be silent. You got to learn to be mute. You got to learn to let somebody get the last say and think that they got the victory. You got to learn to let somebody gossip about you and you don't confront them and say, oh, I heard you gossiping about me and I want to come confront you. No, 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 no. When you are in the literature of the spirit, things that you observe, you will have to say, I'm not paying attention to it now. I don't have a reaction to it. I don't have nothing to say about it. It's not for me to speak on it. It's not for me to engage a response on it. I'm telling you, remember what I said. God has to be able to obey himself through you before he could bless himself as you. And you have to look at all the circuits where obedience could be made manifest unto God so that the blessing could be, be made to manifest unto you. You got to study that. Now, let, let's go further in this because uh, I, I don't think I ever, I want to I show you this. Look what it says. All right. So, so look what it says right here. And Moses lifted up his hand with his rod and he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly. Somebody write this on the line, satanic abundance. Satanic abundance. Imagine getting your way and you're out of God's way now. You're not even in his will no more but you're prosperous. <sighs> Imagine being out of God's way and doors start opening for you abundantly. <sniffs> Imagine leaving God's will for your life and people start liking you and accepting you and opening doors for you and giving you opportunities and money moving for you. And you feel better and you feel more at peace about how your life is. Satanic abundance. <whistles> 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 
Look what the Bible says. When Moses smote the rock, the water came out abundantly. Oh. Now look at this. The congregation drank and all their beasts also. Satanic abundance. Let's go to verse 12. I'll get back there. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. <whistles> Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Ah, people are being tricked out of their true purpose and their inheritance in life because of satanic abundance. You disobey God, but door is still open. You disobey God, but you still got good news. You disobey God, but you feel peace around you. Oh, it's nice now. I'm in a better place. Satanic abundance. When you're in covenant with Satan, Satan will make satanic abundance overshadow the reality that you're on the wrong path. See, pride leans to its own understanding. The Bible says in Psalm 37, marvel not, envy not, when the wicked man causes evil schemes to come to pass. Don't be shocked when what he does happens. Don't be shocked when he purposes in his heart to do something and it actually happens. He brings evil things to pass and it works. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. That means that you could be in wickedness and prosper. You could be serving the devil and prosper. But it's satanic abundance. Now, remember I just taught you in the beginning that the man that uh, walks in the rain and has an umbrella over his head and the man that uh, speaks to the rain and the rain stops. The man that walked through the rain had the umbrella may have more authority than him because the man that the rain stops to, God could probably didn't want the rain to stop, but that man has a gift of authority. That man has been a friend to God at some point. There's a gift of authority there. And so God will back and, 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 and let things happen for that man, even though that's not his true will. So let me show you in the word now. I already showed you Elijah when the angel had to stop him from calling down fire again because it was working. And he about to do it again. And the angel said, no, 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 don't do it now. Don't use that authority. And I told, and, and, and the person that uh, walks through the rain and has the umbrella may have the authority of what? The authority of agreement which is higher than the authority of demonstration because God could back you simply because uh, you, 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 you were obedient, you were following. That's why he didn't want Balaam to go curse the people because the gift of authority is on Balaam. Now let's go here to the word. As if I wasn't already telling you the word. Look what it says right here in verse um, 12. Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the children in the eyes of Israel, uh, children in Israel's eyes, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now look at this here. Let's go up here to verse 11. Look what it says right here in verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand and he smote the rock which is exactly what God told him not to do. And the water still came out. The The water came out while he's doing something in his own authority. Now God didn't tell him to do this. 
So just just think about this for now on in life. See, um, everybody likes money. But I will never sell, I will never sell electric cigarettes to get money. I've been offered many of that. I've been offered many business deals with people. Many. That make millions. I will never be selling cannabis. I'll never sell weed. I'll never sell stuff for money. Listen to what I'm telling you. Because you can make the money and still be out of God's presence. You could have success and still be out of eternal life. Your name is not found in the book of life. I'm telling you. There is a prosperity that blocks people from God's prosperity. There's a prosperity that Satan will throw at everybody's life so that you don't get to God's prosperity. There's an abundance that Satan will send to everybody's life so that you don't get to God's abundance. Everybody. Not, not two, three. Look, the Lord Jesus is being offered this prosperity. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. I'll give you satanic abundance. Wow. If you're on this line, write me satanic abundance. Let me, let, 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 come on. Let's fill this line. Satanic abundance. This, this phrase by the Holy Ghost is worthy enough for you to think about because you're going to confront this all the time, throughout the year, throughout your month, throughout your weeks. Satanic abundance. I remember when I was extremely poor in a season. It was only a season. And I remember when I, I was extremely poor, your, your mind starts to ponder all type of wrong things to make money. Your mind starts to think about, you know, you know, uh, look, this person making money, I could do this. Or I, maybe I could join this person for a couple of weeks. And maybe maybe I could go over here and do this for a couple. Of, they make some money right there. And I need, you know, I, 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 a hee-haw. A hee-haw. Huh? Saints, do you know that there's women that give their body in exchange for money? Called satanic abundance. Do you know that there's people that kill other people for money? It's called satanic abundance. Shh. Shh. And all on the path of denying yourself and letting go of your own understanding and receiving the understanding of God is divine abundance. What's Psalm 115 verse 14 say? The Lord shall increase me, what? More and more. So on the pathway of you following God's instruction, you leaning not to your own understanding is what? Divine abundance. So this is the blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22, that makes you rich and it adds no sorrow. The superior life, the high life, the great life, the wide life, the wise life, the increasing life is in laying down your will and emotions, your will and your emotions and your thoughts and your concepts to receive the instruction from God. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 18, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse what? Instruction. The instruction matters. So poverty is connected to you missing the instructions of God. Shame. Now, saints, here's the crazy thing about shame. Many people look at shame and you think that it got to be obvious. There are some realms of shame that you won't see until you leave your body. My goodness. When, when the rich man looked up in hell, he was shamed. 
He looked up and said, can he come? Give me a drop of water on my tongue. He's shamed, but he's shamed in eternity. Oftentimes you think that shame going to be so obvious in this life. Do you know that you could be going the wrong path and you ain't got no shame that's visible? You think when artists are standing on the, on the stage performing their music and everybody dancing, do you think that's the realm of shame yet revealed? No. No. Everybody bopping. No shame. Money being made, no shame. The shame will be revealed at a distinctive time. Saints, when Saul didn't kill the Amalekites, there's no shame. But when he's no longer the king in the office, that's the shame. Shame will show up if you disobey God's instructions for your life. And it may not show up in your physical life on earth. It may never show up. It may never show up. Sometimes people be like, you know, they're going to see that they went the wrong way. They're going to see that they did the wrong thing. They're going to see that they said the wrong thing. No, no, no. They may not never see until they're outside of their body. That's why it's so important to constantly lay down your life. And remember, when you deny yourself and you lay down your life, what do you step into? Divine abundance. Legajano. Gejeze ki anjos. Trevelijanan zeleviano. Eve kuvakanakos. If you have life, Daily, that oxygen has a purpose. Did you know that thoughts is the oxygen of the brain? That's why if you hear something bad and you think something bad, your breathing change in your body. Because there's oxygen levels in the brain. Your thoughts are determining your oxygen levels. That's why if somebody is bitter, it's easy for them to get cancer because their oxygen levels change, which means that their bones receive less life, which means that the bones begin to deteriorate. And when the bones deteriorate, here come cancer. Here's the cancerous functionality because the oxygen levels within are dying off. The brain that you have today is only ruled by you. It's only in your control. And if you get control of this brain, divine abundance happens in your life. Increase in provision happens in your life. You have to get in control of the brain. Money cometh is a divine ability of God that he gives to those that learn to steward the brain. Money cometh, it started intensifying in my life while I was sleeping inside of my car. I was sleeping inside of a Buick, a car. And money cometh intensified in a time where I didn't have no money, no mail, no nothing. Money cometh intensified because my brain was being empowered by God's words. My brain was being empowered by Deuteronomy 111. My brain was being powered by the abundance, the abundance realm of God, his place of abundance. Money cometh, it intensifies in your life when you don't see no intent, no evidence of it. Money cometh don't work because you see confirmation. Money cometh work when you become confirmation. If you take a note, write that down. Money cometh don't work because you see confirmation. Money cometh work because you become confirmation. You got to become confirmation. 
See, Isaac is in a place where there's no confirmation of finances. Money cometh happens when, when uh, we see Isaac having no confirmation of provision. But see, Isaac moved from looking for confirmation to becoming conf confirmation. You, 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 you can't look for money. You got to become money. You got to become finances. You got to become provision. Stop looking for abundant provision. Say, I am abundant provision. I am wealth. Don't look for wealth and riches to be in your house. Say, I am wealth and I am riches and I am the house. I am. That's the I am realm. There's a I am in money cometh. And, and this degree of money cometh is when it starts to manifest. This is the last stage. You got to recognize the I am dimension. That's when stuff starts showing up without no hindrance. You got to recognize I am the silver and I am the gold because the silver and gold belongs to God. And I am God flowing in the earth realm. The spirit of God lives in me to flow as him in the earth realm. So the same money that he owes and he is. Saints, why do you think that Jesus walked on streets of gold? Why do you think that everybody walking on streets of gold in the heavenlies? Because God took who he was and made it the decorations in heaven. So when you see the crystal, when you see the barrel, when you see the sapphire, when you see the bezel, when you see the silver and the gold, God just took who he was and materialized it as diamonds. I am money cometh. I am money cometh. Money cometh is mine. It is with me. It is for me. And it is me. I am money cometh. I am increased more and more. I am financial overflow. I am harvests. I am due season. You ain't never said that before. Say it, 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 say it. You ain't never said that before. I am due season. You ain't never, you ain't never say that before a day in your life. I am due season. I am due season. There's people waiting for due season. I am due season. It's with me. It's for me. It is me. I am due season. I am the acceptable year of the Lord. You ain't never say that before. You ain't never say that. I am the acceptable year of the Lord. I am the acceptable year of the Lord. You ain't never say this before. I am wealth transferences. Man, I feel the power of God moving through me as I'm talking about this. My, my. My, 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 I am wealth transferences. I am wealth transferences. I am supernatural money moving. I, I am debt cancellation. I am healing in the body. I am divine healing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am deliverance. I am salvation. See, see, see. When you really get in your zone, you, you start to recognize how am I so troubled? And I ain't even recognize that I'm doubled. I done doubled up. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Not only did the Lord die and rise again after three days and gave me his inheritance, but I got my own inheritance that was reserved before he had died. So, so I doubled up because I not only got the inheritance of Jesus, I got the inheritance of me, my own name. And so, so there's a doubling up. Jesus said, I paid for this. What belonged to me, I give to you. Look what he prayed in John chapter 17. Verse 22, the same glory you have given to me, I've given to them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you understand what the glory realm is dealing with? It's dealing with provision. It's dealing with money. It's dealing with wealth. It's dealing with houses, lands, transportation, clothes. It's dealing with food. It's dealing with the finest of meals. It's dealing... Ah! 
It's dealing with everything, every good and perfect thing, everything that will make you feel blessed, feel happy, feel good, feel satisfied. He's saying that the same glory you've given to me, I give unto them. You are a partaker of what? His divine nature. You are a joint heir with who? With who? Christ. Money coming to me now. Ha, ha, ha. Money coming to me now. Because we're talking about the joint heir with Christ Jesus now. We, my goodness. We, we talking about the joint heir with Christ Jesus now. We, we, we dealing with the joint heir with Christ Jesus. We're not just talking about one aspect of your inheritance. We're talking about his inheritance too. I am debt cancellation. I am life and life more abundantly. I am eternal life. I am healing. I am deliverance from evil. I am protection. I am wisdom. I am knowledge. 